Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Spyderco Spidey Chef. This has quickly become one of my favorite Spyderco knives, and knives in general really. And huge shout out to Eric over at Indiana Knives for helping me get a hold of one of these. Definitely go check out Indiana Knives, they're fantastic, super fast shipping, and Eric is just a, a great guy. He really is. I worked with him a little bit now on a couple of other things as well, um, like Kaiser Feist for example. I picked it from him. Really, really cool guy. Huge thank you to Eric for hooking me up with this. I did pay for it, but he helped me out a little bit. And um, I'm really, really excited to share my love of this knife with you guys. So we'll, of course, go over what I like about it when I'm neutral towards what I dislike. But before all that, let's go ahead and get into a size comparison. All right, first up, we'll bring in the Boker Urban Trapper Petite. Um, this is a fairly small knife, and it is certainly very small next to the Spidey Chef. However, there's one thing um, they are fairly comparable in, and that is overall thickness. Um, the Spidey Chef is very, very close to the same thickness as this knife. The Spidey Chef is very, very, very thin, um, including the blade stock as well. We'll go over that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and compare open length here. Now, the Urban Trapper Petite has mm, a roughly 2.7-inch blade. And the Spidey Chef doesn't have a ton of blade length, but it does have a lot of blade girth, um, and we all know that's what matters, really. The handle is a little bit longer, and by a little bit, I mean like an inch and a half. And the blade's maybe three-fourths of an inch longer. Overall, uh, Spidey Chef is much, much larger, but it's not that big in, uh, in terms of thickness. And even blade stock is fairly comparable. The Spidey Chef has very thin blade stock, especially for the size. And considering that super high full flat, flat grind you get there. Let's go ahead and bring in the ZT-0450CF. So again, in terms of handle length, mm, half an inch or so. This is a bit uh, closer in size to the Spidey Chef. And in terms of blade length, if we bring them right here, you can see the ZT is actually has a longer blade. Um, again, Spidey Chef is not your best blade to handle ratio. If, if that's explicitly what you're looking for, you might want to check somewhere else. But overall length is somewhat similar. Again, Spidey Chef is going to be a little bit longer. This is a, a decent size knife, although I wouldn't say it's large. And just in terms of overall thickness, these knives, again, very comparable. The ZT is just a hair thicker, but very, very close. And for the last size comparison, we'll bring out the Booze Blade Smoke. Um, closed overall handle length, about the same. Again, the booze blade smoke is a little bit more narrow, but uh, in terms of handle length, very, very close. And in terms of blade length, it is longer. It is longer for sure. Uh, this is a 3.5 inch blade. This is a 3.3 inch roughly blade. So you, you do notice that. Um, not so much in use as far as I can tell. And again, when you go to thickness, this, this knife is much, much thicker than the Spidey Chef. About a scale's thickness, actually. And you do notice that a little bit when it's in the pocket. All right, on to what I liked about this knife. A lot of stuff here. Really, really love this thing. A lot more than I thought I would. Um, the main thing is the design. That's what initially attracted me to this knife. It's very unique. Um, it has this kind of curve back here. It's just a very... It's a curvy and boxy knife at the same time. It's it's very weird. It's kind of hunchbacked. The blade's almost straight, but has a bit of a swoop. And when you open it up, stuff gets even weirder looking. It just it's it's somewhat akin to a Persian, um, in terms of silhouette. But when you actually look at the blade shape, you get that sheep's foot. It's really not, especially most point most Persians are very pointy. Uh, this is not going to be very good for piercing into stuff. So keep that in mind. But the design is very interesting. There's very few things out there like it. Um, most recently, the Spyderco Drunken is fairly similar in terms of silhouette, but it's not the same. So if you're looking for this, this is going to be about the only thing you're going to be able to find. Great materials in this as well. You have LC200N steel. This is... No one's going to call it rust-proof, but it is rust-proof. Um, Blade HQ has a fantastic video where they put the steel in salt from the Great Salt Lake. Perfectly fine. I think the only real issue was the uh, Spyderco emblem. And the original Spidey Chef had a stainless steel detent ball. As part of their CQI program, which stands for Constant Quality Improvement, they've added a ceramic detent ball in these newer ones. So mine, which you probably can't see, 
You can see the detent ball there with a little bit of gunk. It is ceramic, so it will not rust on you. They've fixed that. The handle is titanium, of course. It's fantastic. Also, never going to rust. Um, I believe this is the same steel on the hardware in the clip. Really, really like the Spyderco wire clip. It's it's probably my favorite clip out there. Um, Appearance-wise, it's somewhat similar, honestly, to the... It's like the knife version of the Lamy Safari clip, to me. I, I could be the only one seeing that, but it looks... <laughs> it's pretty close. But great, great clip. Um, fairly deep carry. You do get a little bit of the knife sticking out of your pocket, but not much. Especially for the size of this knife, it carries very, very well, and most of it's because of that thinness. The overall size looks a bit imposing, but it is super, super thin in the pocket. It is fantastic. It really makes this knife super carryable. And when you're considering the size of this thing, considering that, in my opinion, it carries better than the ZTO 450 CF, that's really saying something, because this is a fairly decent sized knife. Overall, it's it's pretty robust, robust, especially when it comes to width. Fairly wide, but you really don't notice that, like I said, just because of that thinness. Um, it does kind of curve into the pocket as well. If you're inserting this into jeans, it's going to, of course, go over this way. Um, it may set a little off-center, but overall it's going to sit in your pocket very, very well. The action on this knife is superb. Um, out of the box, it was really good. And a lot of people um, say it, it, it is smooth, but you some people say you can't flick it. Obviously, you very much can. You can kind of roll this out once you get past that detent, and it is fairly smooth. It's, um, it's kind of like rubbing two sheets of glass with hot butter between them together. Um, very, very smooth. I generally do flick it with my thumb. You can do a middle finger flick, I will say. There's enough here for me. I've heard of some other people running, running into issues. Well, it's hard to do under a camera, but here, let's kind of... That's a little easier. Um, I can get a really good flick on this if I'm just standing up. And especially if you give it a little wrist, you're going to get a great flick out of there. Just make sure to do it with kind of the fat of your fingertip and not your nail, or you're going to shred it to bits. We'll get back to that in a minute. Go and bring the blade back out here and talk about it for a little while. Super, super thin blade stock comes to a very, very good point. Although not great for piercing, it will work. Super high flat, full flat grind. So you have about an inch and a quarter, especially down here. So it gets extremely, extremely thin behind the edge. I'll see if I can kind of show you that here. It's going to be very hard to get the camera to focus. But maybe... You can see how thin that is. That's that's very impressive. Uh, the blade stock on this is already super thin. This thing slices like a beast. It is amazing. Um, I use this almost exclusively for food prep now. Um, that was my excuse for getting it, and it's fantastic. Um, fruits, vegetables, meat, all kinds of stuff. Not super great for bread, but that's why you have that serrated knife. Um, it slices amazingly. You can get super thin slices with this, and it came very, very sharp out of the box. You, I dropped it up, you know, probably uh, once a week or so, and it, it's held the edge very, very well. This is a really good steel. I like it a lot. And on to the last thing here, the ergonomics. They are just fantastic on this knife. Even when I really bear down, there's no real hot spotting except for maybe a little right here at the lock bar cutout where the clip um, kind of comes up, gets a little high, there's a, a quite a bit of contrast there, but overall it's fantastic. If you're into cutting people with your chef's knife, reverse grip works fantastic as well. This is not a knife I would recommend for self-defense. I'm not probably not going to recommend any knives for self-defense, I'm not trained, but this is not going to be one because you're not going to be able to pierce much at all with that. Um, but ergonomically it's fantastic. One little touch that I like a lot, this little detail, um, you'll see these kind of grooves right here on each side and what I believe that's for and what I'm going to always stay convinced that that's for is for a pinch grip when you're cutting preparing food you can really get up there on the blade you can get really up behind it with your thumb or your pointer finger as well you can get right there and right here and get some really really good control with this thing love it they nailed the ergonomics on this and a lot of other things about this knife as well on to what I'm neutral towards. So first thing up here is going to be the price. Spyderco prices have been increasing. We all know this. Um, it's not great. This knife is $217 at the moment. Um, 
it's not super high. I would like to see a little lower. I think one one eighty to two hundred would be a great price for this guy. I know you're getting the titanium. You're getting an unusual steel. I understand that and I appreciate that. And the design is really really good as well. You got to pay for that. I understand all that. But two seventeen is a little bit much nowadays. Um, and the reason I say that is you can get a lot of titanium scaled knives with different steels for less. Um, you can get a titanium scaled knife with Bowler and 390 for less. I just think they need to bring the price down a little bit. I appreciate they're improving this model. I'm sure that's taking up a little bit of money, but they're keeping it up to date. That's, that's a great, great thing to do to support your designs. But that price probably needs to come down a little bit. And those incremental... 8% Spyderker price increases are not helping at all. Next up, the finish on this, uh, the blade and the handle, I don't love. Um, more specifically, the blade, uh, it's just kind of machine finished. I really wish they had done uh, like a mirror stone wash with this. I think it would be fantastic and really, really set this knife apart. Um, but you do kind of get that machine finish. You can just see the, the vertical lines. It's kind of boring. Um, but it's there, you know. And my issue with the finish on the titanium scales is that you can it leaves some marks and snail trails very, very easily. You can see I, I've used this knife quite a lot. The worst spot, though, is actually right under the clip. If I can get up here, you can kind of see where that clip sits. It really wears on that titanium and scrapes that finish away. It's a little frustrating, but if you don't mind your knife looking a little weathered, a little beat up, it's not going to be a huge issue. On to the spidey hole. So this thing is sharp, um, and not like a little sharp. Like it, if you if you flick this with your fingernail, it's going to shear off bits of your fingernail. Um, on on my fingers, it's not bad, but if you're used to uh, a bit more of a rounded. Um, spidey hole, say, on some of the Golden Col golden <laughs> Colorado USA Earth models, it's going to be a little sharp, and it, it kind of is. Um, once you get used to it, it's not bad at all. It doesn't bother me now, but when I first started with it, it was a little sharp. Um, it's just a, a comment. It's not a huge deal. Some people say it gives you more grip. Some people say it just hurts your finger. So that's in the neutral. I really don't care that much either way, but I thought I would mention it. On to the dislike. A couple things here. Um, we'll touch on the minor one first. So I've disassembled this knife. I know, shocker, shocker. Um, but ever since then, and it's not just me, or I wouldn't mention this, it has a rattly lanyard tube. You can kind of hear that. I'll bring it closer to the microphone so you can hear it real quick here. So it's just that the lanyard tube in there is, is kind of loose. Um, it's not that it's knocked loose. I, f I think it's kind of seated very tightly when they initially, uh, you know, put the knife out. They send it, you know, to the retailer. I think it's seated in there pretty tightly, but over time it just kind of loosens up. You can take that out. That's completely up to you. Um, I've just been too lazy to. So, and the last... And only other dislike, and it's something I really do dislike, is the lock stick on this knife. Have I've had this knife for several months now, about five months, maybe a little bit longer. And there's still an occasional issue with lock stick. So when you open up this knife, um, obviously there's no lock bar insert on this. And I understand that. They're trying to keep it, you know, uh, that, that water resistant. I think an LC200 in lock bar would be okay, but no. Uh, and you do have fairly good lock up on there, but that titanium on the steel creates a bit of lock stick. And you can kind of see it here. I'll just be pushing it and it'll kind of pop over. So that was way, way worse out of the box. Um, it actually took a decent bit of force for me to initially get that over for the first couple of days. You can see some remnants here from where I put Sharpie on the lock face. A little bit there, that black. Um, and that helps a little bit. You can also do it with lead. Um, the lead may stay on there a little bit better. But you're gonna have a bit of that lock stick, and you can you can really hear it. I'll I'll bring this part up the microphone as well, so you can hear it pop over. That, just that little click. It's just annoying. 
Um, otherwise, the knife is fine, but we'll go ahead and move on to the conclusion to talk about all that. All right. On to the conclusion for this knife. Do I think you should buy it? Do I think it is worth your hard-earned money? Yes, I do. Um, I really, really like this. This is... Uh, it's mm, it's really hard to pick a favorite knife. It's kind of like picking a favorite kid, even though I don't have kids, and I really don't like kids all that much. No offense if you're a kid watching this video. Thank you for watching. You should subscribe. But it's not my least favorite knife either. Um, I really like this thing. It's it's definitely top three. Definitely. Um, it's just, it's really good. It's really fun to play with, to fidget with. It's an exceptional knife. I'll set it down and quit holding it so you guys can actually take a look at it. It's an exceptional knife though. It's really good. The execution here is almost perfect. If they would fix that lock stick and fix that lanyard tube, I would have nothing to complain about. This knife is excellent. Price is a little high, a little bit mad on the finish. The spider co hole is a little sharp, but it's really, really good overall. I super duper, super duper recommend this knife. If you have the $200, pick one up. If you're looking for a folding chef's knife that you can, you know, cut your tomatoes with and mix in that pocket lint from where you've been carrying it all day, pick it up. It's fantastic. It's really 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 good i really really like this knife um and it's it's a permanent addition to my collection hands down um it's just it's astounding it really blew me away how good this is i hear people talk about it all the time but really getting in hand and getting to experience it really really impressed me if you can try one of these out ignore the lock stick it will eventually go away or so i've heard um if you can't get over it don't pick this up if that's a deal breaker, don't go near this one. This one definitely is going to have lock stick out of the box. But if you can get over that, you're going to get an excellent, excellent knife for EDC, food prep, fishing, whatever you need it for. It's going to be good. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you should subscribe um, and leave a comment. Let me know what your your thoughts are on this knife. If you would use a knife for food prep, um, because my wife is like, no, and I'm, I decided yes. So I just wash it um, in front of her when I go to use it. But if you have any questions or anything about that, you know, let me know as well. Again, check out Eric's shop. He's a great guy. It's indianaknives.com. I'll leave a link below for you. I believe the Spidey Chef is currently out of stock, but he has a ton of other knives. He has a great sales section as well. He's a really, really cool guy. Again, I can't recommend him enough. If you're going to shop from an online retailer, he's probably the one I've had the best experience with, hands down. Um, and if you have any questions about anything on his shop, just let him know. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to help you out. He's really good at replying quickly. But uh, yeah, thanks again, Eric. And thanks to all you guys for watching my stuff. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye.